What's up, YouTube? Want to touch on the whole busy thing again? You know, people being addicted to distraction, and when you totally take it on an overload like that, just being addicted to distraction and constantly being concerned with objectives and objects is when you make mistakes and get hurt. Anyway, like I feel like people too. Like another thing with the jogging thing, with the people running in general. Like I feel you on the cardio, no doubt. I feel you, but people. Do, I feel like the whole running fervor, a lot of it is, not for everybody, I don't want to make a total generaliz generalization here, but for a lot of people that, they're, they're running, it manifests in them running because they're literally running from things in life. So they literally run for like a hobby and like a thing to do because they, they're running in all facets of life, so they it manifests that they're actually running. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it's an unhealthy way to, to, to distract yourself, you know, it's it's nice that you're running and distracting yourself in that way, but at the same time, you know, you're you're, you're probably running from something. But um, let me see what I got here. Let me see what I got here. Okay, distance. People feel like that since you're uh, creating a uh, a distance or a space for yourself to flourish and grow, that you're disconnecting with other people. And honestly, I just feel like anybody that doesn't want you to grow, you should separate or create distance anyway in general. So it's not disconnection. It's just distance. You're always connected, and it's just about how how you want to keep the connection, you know, because, again, we're all related. Everything's relative. It's just about the relationship that you choose to forge between you and a person or a thing. So, you know, that that's, distance really doesn't mean anything. Because, you know, you could be like me, like I'm th my best friend's 3,000 miles away, my mother. It's 3,000 miles away, and she might as well be right next to me. We, we are that close. Like, she knows what I'm thinking, I, knows what, and I know what she's thinking. Like, the, the connection is so strong that it doesn't, just because my physical dense body is here doesn't mean, you know, she could be lifetimes away. I know I still feel the connection. There's, there's, not, there's never going to leave my body like I feel my grandmother still to this day. All I'm saying is that you could be right next to someone physically and be light years from them. It doesn't, just because you have a close proximity physically does not mean that you're close to them as a whole. So distance is not, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It just is what it is. You know, the, it's all about connections and how you choose to keep the connection, how you choose to, to manage the connection and what you do to make it what it is. You know, like you say, we're gonna we're gonna stay close no matter what, no matter how far apart we are. So, as you know, there's ways to be unhealthy. As far as being busy, too. That's all I was trying to say. Like my father, he was one of those running types, like, and go and go to work, and just and you know, I mean, I know he had to work a bunch of jobs just to you know keep the lights on and everything, but at the same time. I could tell that he'd rather be at work than be with his family because it was his, it was escapism. A lot of it is escapism, and it's whatever you know. It's cool. I don't hold it against him at all. Like it is what it is. You know, I learned from the whole situation, so I'm glad it happened. Either way, you're not gonna disturb the peace in me because again, if somebody has control over your emotions, then you're a slave to them. That's the worst form of slavery is internal. So when it comes to escapism, we es we we escape in all different ways. We escape from by running, hitting the gym, all different ways we escape. And, you know, it's cool to vent and all that and to emotionally express yourself so you don't hold on to emotional baggage and then it turns into physical baggage. But at the same time, you know, if you just don't run from it and, and face certain things and handle it, you won't be running all the time. And you won't be constantly on the hamster wheel. Like my father is constantly on the hamster wheel still. He, in his 60s, still on the hamster wheel. Like, I don't know, it's just not pleasant to me. And I feel like it's about being pleasant or unpleasant, the, the whole thing, you know? I'm not saying he's a, he's, a, he's a bad guy or a sucker or people that are like that are bad or suckers. Because, you know, it takes some will and some toughness to, to bite that bullet and do that and to provide or whatever for your family. But he could have made it more pleasant and could have, would have, should have. You know, it's about doing. I'm not mad. I'm just saying, like, I'm not about to pray or hope or wish it's about doing. Like, I'm either do it or I'm not going to do it. It's like cut and dry. And 
that's what it is. You know, it is what it is, and it's, it is what it's going to be or what you're going to will into this existence.